All right, in this scene over here, we're gonna have a ton of fun learning everything that we need to know about heme synthesis. We're gonna talk about the process, the substrates, the enzymes, inhibition, as well as diseases associated with this process. So let's begin. Here we are in the Heman factory. In this factory, they produce the Heman. Heman is going to represent heme. Let's talk about the process of how the factory makes the Heman, and through that we're gonna learn how to make heme. It all begins with these guys over here. Let's take a look at them. The workers begin the process with these two guys over here. This guy over here who's made of hay is always sucking things. Here he happens to be sucking a lollipop. So he's the sucking hay. Sucking hay for succinyl coa And next to him is the sea that glides, or the gliding sea. Gliding sea for glycine. The process of creating heme begins with succinyl coa and glycine which is written on the wall over here for reference. So again, succinyl CoA and glycine combine. And what do they produce? Here is Aladdin. Aladdin on this carpet that has acid all over it. So this is Aladdin acid. Aladdin acid for al acid or ala, aminolivalenic acid. Aminolivalenic acid is produced when succinyl CoA and glycine come together. And what is the enzyme responsible for this conversion? Well, here we see this evil face. I'm gonna call it a synthase. Synthase for synthase. Allosynthase is responsible for the conversion of succinyl CoA plus glycine to ala. You may have been wondering why there is this rate sign over here. It says rate or percent. Rate is going to remind us of rate limiting step, as this is the rate limiting step of heme synthesis. Wait a minute, what's that buzzing that I hear? That's actually a bee, a bee holding sticks. B sticks for B6. This B6 over here reminds us that vitamin B6 is a cofactor for this enzyme. All right, one more thing before we move on to the next step. What was that? Every once in a while, this thing comes down and smashes the sin face. This is a huge cylinder made of cinder blocks, which reminds us of sideroblastic anemia. As an X-linked sideroblastic anemia, there is a defect in allosynthase. We also see the sugar cubes over here inside of this cinder block well thing. The cinder block thing is shaped like a cylinder to remind us of what we see under the microscope in sideroblastic anemia. We see iron-laden ringed sideroblasts with Prussian blue staining. And inside the cinder block structure over here are the glucose sugar cubes. Glucose over here was also involved in stopping synthase. This reminds us that glucose also inhibits this step of heme synthesis. All right, we're ready to move on to the next step. So we have Aladdin over here. Aladdin is very excited about his acid carpet over here, and he goes downward. And he turns into this man over here. This man is called Poor Fork Billy. I'm not sure why they call him Poor. Maybe because he doesn't have any friends? I'm not sure. But he's Poor Fork Billy. Poor Fork Billy for porphyrbolinogen. So again, the second step of heme synthesis is when ALA is converted to porphyrbolinogen. Now the enzyme involved in this reaction is ALA dehydrogenase. But I don't have a symbol for that in order to keep things simple. What I do have over here is this pencil going through ALA dehydrogenase. This lead pencil reminds us of lead, as lead inhibits this step of heme synthesis. That is, it inhibits the conversion of ALA to porphyrobilinogen. Keep your eyes open, as we'll see this lead pencil coming up soon, since lead also inhibits another step of heme synthesis. Let's move forward. So in the factory, porphyrobilinogen walks forward, and he turns into this hydra over here. A hydra is like a, a multiple-headed creature, but over here, the heads are oxen heads. So this is the Hydra Ox. Hydra Ox for Hydroxy. Actually, this Hydra Ox was apparently on a metal bike lane. That's why there is this metal bike over here. Hydra Ox on the metal bike lane for Hydroxymethylbilane. So again, porphyrobilinogen was just converted to Hydroxymethylbilane. And this was with the enzyme porphyrobilinogen deaminase, as porphyrobilinogen was deaminated. Now, once in a while, these girls come up. <laughs> And these girls over here are part of the cute intermission show. Cute intermission for acute intermittent. This reminds us that acute intermittent porphyria involves a defect in porphyrobilinogen deaminase. And thus, there is a disruption of porphyrobilinogen to hydroxymethylbilane. And while we're here, we'll just talk about why they're on the domino. 
They're on this domino to remind us of autosomal dominant, as this disease is inherited in autosomal dominant fashion. And the P's over here, the five P's, remind us of the five P's of acute intermittent porphyria. Painful abdomen, port wine-colored P, polyneuropathy, psychological disturbances, and precipitated by factors that increase allosynthase, such as drugs, alcohol, and starvation. Alright, that's the end of the intermission show. Let's bring these girls back. <laughs> Alright, so we're up to hydroxymethylbiline. What's the next step of heme synthesis? That's when the hydroox turns into this euro guy over here. This euro guy reminds us of uroporphyrinogen, uroporphyrinogen 3. As the next step of heme synthesis is when hydroxymethylbilane is converted to uroporphyrinogen, uroporphyrinogen 3. Uroporphyrinogen 3 is then converted to this corporation building over here. Corporation for copro-porphyrinogen, copro-porphyrinogen 3. Now there is a disease also involved with this process. Over here we see the fairy. She also sometimes comes up. Now this fairy over here has two interesting things about her. First of all, that she's covered in tar. So she's the poor fairy in tar. Poor fairy covered in tar for porphyria cutanea tarda. This reminds us that the disease porphyria cutanea tarda is involved in a defect in the enzyme responsible for converting uroporphyrinogen to copropyrinogen. And specifically, this is the enzyme uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase, which is probably why she likes to stand in this deep cardboard box. Deep cardboard box for decarboxylase. And she likes to smash it with her fingers. And we notice her fingers over here, they have these lesions on them. These are the blistering cutaneous lesions often found in porphyrinogen cutanea tarda. They are a result of photosensitivity and hyperpigmentation. Now one more thing about her is that she kind of looks like a domino with this tar on her. So domino again reminds us of autosomal dominant, as this disease also is inherited in autosomal dominant fashion. And now let's bring the fairy back. Alright, we're up to the next step of heme synthesis. Oproporphyrinogen 3 is converted to this proton over here. Actually, it's a proton fin. This shark doesn't have a normal fin, he has a proton as a fin. So proton fin for protoporphyrin. This is the next substrate in heme synthesis. Protoporphyrin then combines with iron to produce heme. So this iron fairy over here reminds us of iron. That iron combines with protoporphyrin to form heme. Now this isn't any fairy, this is the fairy key. She always has keys with her. So she is the fairy key. Fairy key for ferroketolase. Her ferroketolase. This reminds us that the enzyme responsible for this conversion is ferroketolase. And again, we have the lead pencil over here reminding us that lead also inhibits this step of heme synthesis. By the way, you may have noticed that in this factory over here, there are two floors. Everything occurring on this second floor up here occurs in the mitochondria. And everything occurring on the first floor is occurring in the cytoplasm. Alright, so that's it for heme synthesis. I hope you enjoyed. Take care. <laughs>